and she is going to talk about anonymous state transmission in a quantum network. Ah, thank you. So yeah, first I would like to thank the organizers for the chance to so that I can give this talk. Uh, and I'm going to talk about uh, anonymous state transmission that I hope at the end of the talk you understand what is that. And in a quantum network, meaning that we are going to analyze in a realistic scenario that, uh, where we have the presence of noise. Uh, and this is a joint work with Victoria Lipinska and Stephanie Vena. Uh, okay, so uh, we are very used to this scenario where we have Alice and Bob and they have this very secret message that they want to communicate. So uh, they are worried about uh, an eavesdropper that can uh, have access to this message. Uh, but sometimes the, the message itself do not carry much information and uh, it's much more relevant who is sending this message. So we actually want to hide who is communicating. <laughs> uh, okay, so just an overview of the talk. So first I will introduce the classical task and then I'm going to talk about what is define what's the anonymous quantum state transfer task, and then I will talk about the uh, protocol that already exists. And I will introduce the protocol that uh, we developed and then uh, compare the performance of these protocols. I don't have the time yet, <laughs> by the way. Um, okay. Uh, so, not uh, last Sunday, but the Sunday before, I was having dinner with my new Brazilian friends. And uh, we are here in this picture all very happy because the waiters came and said, okay, the bill is paid. Uh, and so we had this problem to decide whether one of us paid the bill, or if the bill was paid by TAP as a compensation for leaving us two days in Lisbon, waiting for the flight. So. <laughs> Uh, but we wanted, to, so like we are very uh, modest people, so we didn't want to show off and say, okay, I paid the bill. So I, one of us paid this bill or it was up and we want to decide uh, what happened. Uh, okay, so uh, this uh, problem was actually introduced by Shao in uh, 88 and it's called the dining cryptographer's problem. Uh, so the cryptographers were having dinner and they want to decide whether the company paid the, for the dinner or one of them paid for the dinners. So since they are cryptographers, they want to do it in a funny way, of course. Uh, <laughs> okay. So uh, he introduced the protocol to uh, solve this problem that uh, uh, each of, so here we have three parties and each of them share a common bit that is secret to the other. So, between the girls, there is the zero. Between uh, the red Alice and Bob, there is a zero. And green Alice and Bob, there is a one. Uh, OK. So if, uh, if I didn't uh, pay the bill, so I should say out loud, what is the XOR of the bits that I share with the other two parties? So as an example, the green shares zero with Alice and one with Bob. So zero plus one is one. So if she didn't pay the bill, she says one. And uh, similarly for the other participants. So if we see uh, what is the sum of the outcomes of that all the cryptographers said out loud is zero. So this means that uh, none of them paid the bill. So all of them, uh, well, their input was zero, so they, they just uh, communicate what was the XOR of the, their outputs. Uh, but if one of them paid the bill, so for example, the green Alice paid the bill, she's going to flip the bit of this, uh, the sum of the bits that she share with the other parties. So for example, here she should output one, but since she paid the bill, she outputs zero. Uh, and the point is that since the other participants don't know what is the bit that is shared with the other part, they cannot know, for, for example, Alice doesn't know if this zero is because she shared one with Bob and flipped the bit, or if because she shared zero with Bob and didn't flip the bit. So is the task clear? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so the parts, they share a bit with uh, every pair of parts share a bit. And um, 
If you didn't pay the bill, you are just going to say out loud what is the XOR of the bits that you share with the other parts. So for example, here I have 0 plus 0. The red Alice will say out loud 0. Uh, the Bob will say 0 plus 1, that is 1. And, and the green Alice will say 0 plus 1, that is 1. And since uh, it, each bit is appearing two times, the sum of all of this should be 0. So if uh, the sum of the outcomes is 0, it means that all of them uh, didn't flip the bit. Uh, whether if one of them flipped the bit, the sum of the outcomes will be 1. Uh, so basically, what this primitive task does is that it computes the XOR of some bits of the parts. Yes. Yes. But like, uh, so this red Alice is going to say the first 0 plus the second 0, and this Bob is the first 0 and 1, and 1 and 0. Yeah. Um, yes. They are random and they are a key, a private key that they share. So they have uh, this secret uh, channel that they share. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, this task was called uh, DCNet, DC from Dynet Photographers. And uh, so basically what this primitive computes is the XOR of uh, the inputs of the part. If I want to input zero, I just sum the, the bits of the share the bits that I share with the other parts. If I want to input one, I flip the, the sum of these bits. Uh, and based on this protocol, uh, Shaun could construct uh, several anonymous protocols. So we can anonymously communicate uh, classical messages from one part to the other. So here I'm just talking about this primitive. I'm not showing how you can construct the other protocols, but uh, I'm stating that you can uh, build other more sophisticated protocols out of this one. Uh, okay, so given that we can uh, communicate classical messages secretly, so now we could ask this question like, okay, can I do more and I want to communicate a quantum message secretly? So this task was introduced by Christian and Stephen Venner in 2005. Uh, and OK, so here we have uh, four participants. And uh, as you can see, they share quantum information or some entangled state. Um, and let's say that the sender that now I'm pointing as Alice, the red Alice, wants to communicate to the yellow Bob. Uh, and this task then, like the goal is that it should be performed in such a way that uh, at the end, uh, the state, the quantum state that Alice wanted to send is transferred to the receiver Bob. Bob has no idea of who of the other parts is the sender, and the other parts has, have no idea of who is sender and receiver. So this is the task that we want to accomplish. Uh, okay, so uh, when they introduced the quantum task, they also presented a protocol that can be performed if these parts share a GHZ state. And uh, the main point is that the GHZ state has these very nice properties that, let's say, if all the other parts measuring the X bases, no matter, except sender and receiver, no matter what is the outcome, sender and receiver end up with a maximally entangled state. Um, so, and uh, this maximally entangled state, and no matter which two parties of the network are sender and, uh, and receiver, it's always possible to establish that by making the other parts measuring the X basis. So this is called anonymous entanglement. So it's uh, a maximally entangled state that was uh, accomplished in the network between two parts, and the other parts doesn't know uh, who shares this entanglement. Okay, I will comment a bit more on that, but uh, then after this uh, anonymous entanglement is established, then uh, simply sender can teleport this state to R. So here I'm saying like, uh, oh, they're measuring the X base, but we need to know what are the outcomes for, so that we can either correct for the, if we have psi minus or, or phi minus or phi plus, 
And this can be accomplished, for example, actually they just want to compute the XOR of the outputs. So actually, if a sender and a receiver share phi plus or psi or phi minus, only depends on the parity of the string of outcomes. So this can be done by using, for example, the, the dining cryptographer's uh, protocol that I have seen. And similarly, for the teleportation, once we teleport, we need to communicate what is the outcome of the, the bell state measurement that uh, the sender has to perform. And this can be done anonymously by building on these classical protocols. So the main quantum part is the possibility to establish anonymous entanglement. Okay, so the first question we asked is like, okay, is, is the GHZ state the only state that can be used to perform this task? Uh, okay, and uh, so as I mentioned, for, for a protocol to be, for a resource state to be useful, we need to be able to generate anonymous entanglement between any two of the parties. So this is one requirement for the performance. And also another requirement for this resource state is that it should be permutationally invariant. So if the parts should take uh, actions that are different, on th that depend on the state that they share, so you very likely could extract some information about who is the sender and who is the receiver. So we would look for states that uh, have these uh, properties. Okay. And one state that we know that is maximally entangled and permutationally invariant is the W state. Uh, so can we perform anonymous uh, quantum state transfer with the W state? Uh, okay, so we propose this protocol that uh, is very similar to the GHZ state with some subtleties. So now let's assume that the parts, instead of a GHZ, they share a W state. And again, the protocol is going to be built on top of several of these dining cryptographer or classical protocols. Uh, now, uh, one problem of the JZ state, or this, or of the W state, is that if the parts measuring the X base, so is, it is possible to generate an entangled state between any of the two parts, but this resultant state is not maximally entangled. So. In fact, we actually made the protocol probabilistic in such a way that uh, if the parts, all the parts get uh, outcome zero, then indeed Alice and, or sender and receiver share a maximally entangled state. Otherwise, they abort the protocol and start again. Uh, and then again, in order to know whether all the parts received outcome zero or not, we built on the classical dining cryptographer's protocol. Um, and then again, once the uh, anonymous entanglement is established, then Alice can teleport the state to, or sender can teleport the state to the receiver. Okay, so uh, can we perform anonymous entanglement with the double state? Yes, but then our protocol is probabilistic. And uh, yeah. So now uh, another question is, what if we have noise in the network? How does this, is this protocol performed? Because so far I have only talked about the very perfect case where the parts share this very pure state. So in order to address this question, we uh, took as the figure of merit the fidelity, the singlet fidelity of this, uh, an, this state, that the, the anonymous entangled state that is generated uh, during the protocol. Uh, so here I just wrote it with the phi plus, but uh, it should be all these states. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so you could do a deterministic protocol example, suppose they measure in the X uh, basis, then for all the outcomes, the state is entangled. So in a sense, it could be a useful resource. But one thing that we looked at, uh, suppose, but this entangled state is not uh, maximally entangled. So we actually looked at, uh, oh, what if we ap apply a filter and then look at the probability of getting a maximally entangled state out of that. And then uh, taking the trade-off of the probabilistic 
probability of this future, actually the optimal case was when they just abort in the first phase. But uh, otherwise, yes. Okay. Uh, so, okay, so our figure of merit is the fidelity of this anonymous entangled state. And uh, it's known that if I have a two qubit state, it's useful for teleportation if and only if this, anonymous, this singlet fidelity is higher than half. So I say that my resource state is useful for anonymous and for quantum state um, uh, transmi anonymous state transmission if the anonymous entangled state that I can generate has singlet fidelity higher than half. So that's what we took as uh, our goal to analyze. Um, okay. Uh, so well, now I'm just going to show like some numerics that we did. Uh, and actually, we did get analytical expressions for all of these uh, fidelity and threshold stuff, but here it's a plot so that you can visualize that. So first we consider depolarizing noise. Um, and in the y-axis, the fidelity of the anonymous entangled state, and here is the visibility of my state. So uh, we see that the fidelities are higher and as we increase the number of parts, it gets worse, the fidelity that we can achieve. And, uh, but the most important thing is that actually for each value of noise parameter that I pick, the fidelity of the anonymous entangled state is much higher with the W state protocol than with the GZ state protocol. Of course, condition that I succeeded in the, in the measurement part. So. Uh, I don't really know, remember if it was if it goes exponentially, but actually they cross at some point uh, uh, with a higher number of parts. I will talk about this in the next one, but uh, I don't really remember if the decay is exponential. Um, yeah, so here is the threshold parameter. So I took as the threshold parameter is like what is the minimum value of Q that I can take such that the state still has singlet fidelity, uh, the anonymous entangled state has singlet fidelity higher than half. Uh, and then we can see that the Q for the W state is smaller, but uh, for up to N equals to 182. So after this time, actually the threshold parameter for the W, for the GZ state gets better. So it was a surprise, but only for a smaller number of parts. Um, so here I want to mention about this other protocol. So there was this proposal uh, for a protocol for anonymous uh, state transmission that only uses bare state. So like in principle, there is a huge advantage that you don't have to prepare this multipartite state, but only bare state between every two, uh, among every two parties. But uh, it does require some memory, so the first part has to keep the state until the end of the protocol. And because of that, when we look at the performance, actually even this protocol performs worse in terms of uh, what is the fidelity of the state that you can generate. Um, um, okay, finally, we also looked at the dephasing noise, and some interesting feature is that uh, for the W state protocol, it uh, does not depend, so the fidelity of anonymous entangled state that you get does not depend on the number of parties. And uh, so this was very surprising at first, but then we realized that, like, uh, uh, well, we believe that m this is happening because of this probabilistic uh, f uh, that we post select on an outcome of the Z measurement. So we measure in the Z base and only uh, if we, we get to zero that we consider the, we proceed with the protocol, otherwise we abort. Um, yeah. So of course, like the probability of succeeding in the protocol, it decreases with the num number of parts, so it decreases linearly. But, uh, but it was very interesting that the fidelity independent of the number of parties. So finally, uh, another nice feature of the protocol. So uh, 
what if one, one of the nodes of this network stops responding? So we know that uh, the entanglement of the W state is robust to particle loss. Uh, on the other hand, the GHZ state, if it loses one particle, it becomes separable. So, so can we tolerate particle loss with our protocol? So yes, but unfortunately, we can only tolerate one particle loss. So if there is two, the resultant state is not enough for, is not good for teleportation, not useful for teleportation. So uh, irregardless of the number of particles, we can only tolerate one particle loss. Uh, so here it's just an illustration on how the W state protocol does, goes. When we, apart from having the depolarizing noise, we add one particle loss. So uh, this particle loss is more significant for the smaller number of parts. So for example, for n equals 4, that is the black curve, it has a really decrease on the fidelity. But in the blue curves, they are almost the same with one particle loss. So it becomes less significant as we increase the number of parts. But on the other hand, it performs worse. Um, so, okay, the, uh, to summarize, uh, we have developed a protocol for anonymous quantum state transmission that uses the W state as a resource, uh, and we compare the performance of uh, different protocols. So, on the plus side, we have seen that the, the W state protocol is more robust to noise, to noise and also it uh, generates uh, anonymous entangled states with higher fidelity for a large range of number of nodes. So again, this subtotal that we note that for many nodes, uh, it inter interchanges a bit. Uh, so the W state protocol can tolerate one non-responsive node, whether the GHZ state protocol and also the the relay protocol, the one I mentioned that's based on bipartite state, cannot tolerate any particle loss. Um, and, but the downside is that the pro protocol is probabilistic. But here I have to mention, so one important thing is that uh, even though the protocol can fail, this failure is her heralded, so they know that the protocol failed before they perform the teleportation. So, they can just uh, use another resource state and try to generate anonymous entanglement again, and they don't lose this uh, state that they would like to teleport. So this is a very important point. Um, okay, so uh, as still open direction, so actually we have proved security of our protocol in an active adversary scenario. So the adversaries can collaborate, can make a joint measurement, uh, but in a, with trusted source. So you take this resource state, that is the W state, or GZ with noise, but this is, uh, is trusted. So what if the adversary corrupt the source? Can we do something? It's still an open point. And uh, uh, yeah, so in order to really compare these two protocols, so the GZ and W state, so I said that the W state is probabilistic, but it may be the case that producing W states is much easier than producing GHZ state. So as far as I know, like uh, experimental uh, state of art of production of multipartite states still very unknown. So it's unclear for the moment uh, if there would be really an advantage in this respect. Uh, yeah, and the last message is that there are several protocols that uh, one can perform with quantum beyond QKD, and we should explore that. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs>